Hey guys, it's Dalen here, and welcome to the 10th day of the World Event Series. Um, I'm actually recording this a little bit later than I normally do, and, um, it's only, but, like, I mean, some days I have recorded it at, like, midnight, but it's, like, 10 o'clock right now, and, uh, basically earlier, actually, I was hanging out with a clanmate, which is one of the reasons why I didn't do this earlier, but, you know, whatever. Um, doesn't really matter what time I do it, as long as I get it done. Um, so, I still have, like, 13k renown to do, so I'm obviously not gonna do that in the video, but, yeah. I've got that much to do. Um, I mean, even if I don't do it before I go to bed tonight, you know, I could always just get up and do it tomorrow as well. Um, so... Uh, f I got a lot of XP from those cr those festive Christmas cracker things. Um, I was hanging out in Burthorpe with my uh, clanmate because she want I I had three of them earlier today, and so I asked her if she wanted to if uh, I asked my clan chat if if anyone wanted wanted them wanted the one uh, k XP, and she did. So I went and hung out with her for a while, and so we stayed in Burthorpe just like talking and got kind of stuff and. I literally, there are so many people there, like, just giving, like, using their crackers on me. So, if you ever, if you guys ever want XP from crackers, just go to a world and, um, hang out at Birthorp. Because that's how a lot of people get their crackers, is from the daily challenges, and you have to go to Birthorp to, um, uh, re redeem them. So, and sometimes people don't have people to use them on, so they just use them on a random person at Birthorp. So, little bit of advice if you want some free XP. Um... So I got some in attack, which is pointless. Uh, I got some in defense, pointless. Uh, I got some in prayer, pointless. I uh, got some in magic, pointless. Runecrafting, pointless. I did get some in construction, which was a good thing. I uh, got some in dungeoneering, which uh, is a good thing, but at the same time, you know, whatever. Um, got some agility, pointless. Uh, good, good. I got about two, two. I got two of them in herbal, which is good. I got some in thieving, pointless. I uh, got some in crafting. I don't remember exactly how many. I think it was like one, but. Got fletching pointless. Uh, and got some in uh, divination, which is good. Some in mining, which is good. Smithing, uh, fishing, cooking. Got three in fire making, which I was like, oh my god, why? Got two in wood cutting. I know I got some in summoning, but I, like some of these skills, I had bonus experience in anyway. I think I got a couple in farming as well. So I did get a bunch of uh, bonus XP. Not that like a lot of it was like I needed it, but you know, whatever. XP is XP at the end of the day, I guess. Um, so, yeah. Oh, uh, how much? I am 192k from construction, which I will probably be getting in the next three days, I think. Three. So, I should be getting it Monday. Monday-ish, um, something like that. So, yeah. And then I'm only 74k to mining level, which I'm probably gonna get maybe this weekend and then get 90 mining next week sometime so i'll have one less skill to worry about for 90 plus um construction is kind of a passive right now because i'm i'm using the world event to level up um i don't know when herb lore or crafting or um farming are really gonna happen although there's those are gonna be the ones that are left um I don't know when those are going to happen, obviously, because those ones are the ones that cost money. And I really am a little short on cash right now, as you guys can see. Um, so, But yeah, I did actually manage to guild that dragon pick, finally. And so I did make an Imkanado pickaxe, which I, I, I guess I'll go show you guys later. Um, at the end of the video, I'll go show you guys what it looks like. Um, just for funds, I guess. Um... There's really no actual reason why I really wanted to get it. It's just like I had the parts in my bank. I was like, might as well just get it, you know. And now I'm not going to be tempted to sell the dragon pickaxe anymore because I can't. So um, it's kind of now an investment that I've made. So, I mean, that's fine. I don't really care too much. But, uh, so yeah. Because every time I've bought a dragon pickaxe before, I've always sold it because I was like, oh, I don't, I don't, I, I'm not using it. Might as well sell it, get more cash, because I'm not getting mining. But now that I can't sell it, I'll actually probably have the motivation to get mining because I have the motivation to use it. So, yeah. Um, there's that. I haven't really been doing too much today, honestly. Um, see, I went, uh, Christmas shopping for my mom. Um, she told me what she wanted. She wanted to. Um, she wanted a uh, humidifier because we don't have one anymore. We used to, but it broke, and so she wanted one because of the dry air and stuff. So I went and got her that. 
I need to wrap it this weekend. So, I did that today. Um, store was absolutely packed. Literally, I was really glad to get out of the parking lot without getting into an accident. Um, so, yeah. Let's see. I'm going to that dance show tomorrow. So, video is probably going to be a little bit... Oh, I'll be recording the video a little bit later tomorrow. Just because of that, so... Yeah, um... Trying to think. Um... Oh, yeah. I got one... I finally got 1k of the, uh, Sacred Metal Fragment. So, I did make one of the overrides. I made the Throwing Star. I think it looks cool. I mean, like, I will probably be using the wand override because I use wands a lot, but I think the throwing star looks cooler, which is one of the reasons I got it first, because I like the look of it. Um, so that's what I got. Uh, you guys can see that it kind of looks like, um, I don't know, shuriken, um, shurikens or whatever they're called. The throwing stars that ninjas use. Um, I know I butchered that uh, pronunciation, so whatever. Um, so I did that. Um... Got that today. What else did I do on RuneScape today? Because I was on quite a bit today. Most of my day was actually spent mining um, for to get that. Because I needed to find that golden nymph to um, guild my pickaxe. Um, so that was how I spent most of my day. And the rest of it I spent pretty much XP wasting with my clan mate. Which I'm fine with. Um, XP waste all the time. So it's fine. Um, but yeah, that's really what I spent most of my day doing in terms of RuneScape play. Um, I did some other things, um, just on the internet as well, but I didn't really, like, do anything else besides that. Um, so, weekend, I'm trying to think, um, I got, I think, three crackers so far today, and, um, I got four yesterday, I got two from mining. Um, I f mining is actually a pretty decent way to get them. I mean, any skill really is because yeah, I think they have the same drop rate. Um, when whatever skill you're doing, apparently, I think what I've heard is they're as rare as getting a spin ticket. So keep that in mind. They're not like super common, but they're not like super super rare either. Like you have a good chance of getting them, and if you wear um Christmas outfits, it ups your chances of doing it. So if like, if you're skilling or something, um could wear Christmas outfits for the blessings of winter. So, um, I'm trying to think what do I want to talk about. Um, it's really funny. All like I get all these been getting all these bandos sub uh, follower dudes popping up everywhere. Um, and like apparently they attack people. They haven't attacked me. I don't know why. Um, I don't know if that's a specific thing or whatnot but they just haven't been attacking me like one of them spawned when i was alone in the lava flow mine so there's no reason it should have spawned there except for me and it didn't attack me it just kind of ran around and looked stupid so i don't know if it's supposed to attack people or what Looks like there's a bandos um pvp here um kind of i kind of think it's funny when people pvp like, try hard PvP. Like, I was in my home world uh, earlier today doing this um, for the 10k renown to get a cracker. And there was literally, like, four, well, actually, more like six or seven bandos PvPers camping this this particular um, structure. Because a lot of people use this, one, this particular one because it's really close to both the um, Captain's Log Teleport and the... Um, armadillo hub so a lot of armadillo people use this one in particular because it's close to our base um so there was like six or seven bandos people who literally just standing here camping people in pvp which was um i, I kind of had to laugh but on the other hand it's kind of like that's just really annoying you know but i mean that's what they're doing i mean that's fine you know i don't really exactly have a problem with it Obviously, since I'm not in PvP, I mean, I've done it in PvP, obviously, um, at the beginning, but then I figured out that it's better XP to do it out of PvP, so, um, that's why I'm doing it now, not in PvP, even if it is two times as slow, which is kind of annoying, but I am fine with doing it, really, um, so... Let's see, Armo is now leading by about 4 mil, um, leads getting larger we will see if we're able like i said 
towards the end of the event will be more so the time to kind of judge who's gonna win because you'll get all the people hopping ship jump ship for um, bandos to get all the rewards from bandos and vice versa so we'll see that towards the end um like i said in a previous video it the the outcome really is going to depend on the if the amount of people jumping ship on armadil will outweigh the amount of people jumping ship on bandos really i mean obviously they probably are just in sheer numbers but um we'll just we'll see really i guess um because obviously bandos is following is smaller um the amount of people on bandos right now is smaller and um you know i know there are a bunch of people who won't jump ship from armadil um and obviously there'll be a bunch of people that won't jump ship from bandos it's just be the amount of people that do jump ship and how dedicated the people who stay are um are like how like are they are the people who stay on each team gonna continue capping every day or are they gonna kind of burn out and not do their capping every day um because it's just getting boring or tedious or they just don't want to do it or whatever so we'll see how that goes um you know i'm really in no position right now to judge who's gonna win i personally think arma will but um there is definitely room for bandos to pull it off the very at the end definitely so i think to accurately judge who would win you're gonna have to wait for at least another couple weeks um, because it definitely is possible for Bandos to win, um, if you take into account, like, people jumping ship and people losing motivation and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, it really, ju it really just depends, I guess, um, I mean, Armadil is obviously leading right now, and I have a fairly strong lead, and it keeps increasing, but at the end of the day, it's possible that the lead could be lost at the very end, um, I mean, if we take into account what what happened with um, the last world event, you know, you would expect that the god that gets ahead early is the one that's going to win. But, you know, it could be different in this one. Uh, personally, I don't, I mean, I would like for not Armadil to die. But at the, on the other hand, um, I personally feel like it would be easy to take out Bandos. <laughs> like any of the other gods could honestly probably take him out. Um, or at least if they were to combine forces, definitely. Like, I'm pretty sure Xeros could take take him out fairly easily, and we know that Xeros is going to be returning at some point. Um, to what extent his of his power will be retained when he comes back, I don't know, and I don't know if anyone really knows that, but he is most likely still going to be one of the most powerful gods in the plane. Um, that's not, like, a judgment thing or whatever. That's just a fact uh, that's a fact that's been in the lore that Xeros was pretty much the most powerful god that there was during that age. Um, beyond Guthix, but Guthix was powerful in his own right and different from Xeros, really. Um, you know, so. But no, yeah, Xeros was pretty much, he had the, basically, because he had the largest empire, all the other gods were scared of him. Or, if not, if they weren't scared of him, they were very wary and cautious of him. And they had to combine forces to fight him. Like, they couldn't take him on. Like, one god could not take him on. So that's really a fact that he was very powerful. And pretty much the most powerful god at the time. Um, like, that's not, like, me being a Zeros follower. Because I'm not, obviously. I'm not a Zeros follower. Um, I think his lore is interesting. And I think that he is definitely a viable god in terms of what he stands for. But obviously, I'm a Saren. I'm a I'm a worshiper of Saren, I guess. Worshiper being using that in a very loose term. I don't really exactly worship any god and specific god in Runescape. But if I were if I had to choose between any of the gods, I would pick Saren. Um, mostly because I was a god. I when um back years ago when like the only gods anyone ever heard of was Zamorak, Ceridomen, or Guthix. I was always like a Guthix follower because I was always like that fan of like balance. I wasn't like I want everything to be, I don't want to be, have, like, Saradome and be in control of everything, but on the other hand, I don't really want Zamorak to have, like, full chaos of the entire world. Like, I kind of wanted it to be in the middle. And honestly, Saren and kind of the godless are the closest you're going to get to Guthix's ideals. Um, 
because the godless, obviously they don't want any gods on um, Gilinar, which is something that Guthix did with the Edicts of Guthix that, that broke when he died, which is why all the gods are coming back, obviously, for those of you who know lore, um, which I'm assuming most of you do because I babble on about lore all the time. Um, and then Saren is very... She's a very big pr um, proponent, I guess, of non-violence, really. But she doesn't really... She's not, like... It's, she's not really, like, a pacifist, per se, like Guthix was. But she... Because she will protect her people. She will protect the elves. But she also won't, like, go out and, like, actively fight. That's kind of what happened during the God War. She kind of just, like, went and crawled away into the uh, the Crystal City. And kind of just protected her people from there, I guess. Um, she wasn't really exactly a big part of the war. So, But yeah, if you combine, really, if you combine Saren and the Godless, that is really the closest you're going to get to Guthix's ideals. But um, unlike Guthix, the Godless are, base are willing to do a lot more to keep the gods out of Gilinor than Guthix was, really. At least in terms of lore, I guess. Because I have done, not, like, a lot, a lot, but a fairly extensive amount of research about lore. Um, I know quite a bit about it. Um, at least I think I do. I mean, obviously there are things that I don't know, but um, I'd like to think that I know quite a bit. Um, obviously I have a lot of opinions that probably people don't agree with, but I mean, that's fine. <clears throat> that always happens when you're discussing religion. Um... So, yeah. So this kind of turned into a lore-ish video. <laughs> so, whatever. Um, I'm kind of curious to see what the third world event, what gods that is going to showcase. Kind of curious. Because, obviously, Saradomen and Zamorak, that is an obvious matchup. Like, that's obvious. They've been pitted against each other pretty much for the whole dawn of time. Ever since RuneScape was created, it's always been those two pitting each other, pitting against each other. Bandos and Armadale, I can see that because of uh, past lore. You could always see that Bandos and Armadale did not get along. You could definitely just see that in, um, what was it, the quest? That, that last quest that was released, um... Missing Presumed Death, I think is what it was called. You could totally tell the tension between Bandos and Armadillo. That was definitely a thing. Um, I'm kind of curious to see who the next gods are going to be. Um, I'd like to think that Zeros might have something to do with it. But I'm obviously not entirely positive. But I would like to think that most likely he will have at least a little something to do with it. Um... Trying to think who else is left. There's Saren, which I don't think she's really going to have much to do with it. Sliske, and I don't really think he's going to have much to do with it either because he's been more featured in quest lines rather than world events. So I think they need to reveal more of his backstory via quest lines before they kind of introduce him into a world event because it's not, it's not hasn't really been stated if he's a god or not. Um, I'm trying to think. So there you said Zero, Saren, Sliske. Um, I know I'm forgetting some, and I just I can't remember. <laughs> Cause um, four of them have already been done, obviously, and I don't. I mean, it's possible that they could do another Saradome and Zamorak one. Um, I don't think they will, because I think the outcome would be obvious based on the reaction from the first one. I think most it the the um, the the reaction from the community be fairly similar to the last one that they did between Sarah Doman and Zemrak. Sarah will definitely probably, well, definitely probably are not exactly compatible. They, you, I mean, it would probably be the same, honestly. I mean, I'm pretty sure that uh, Sarah Doman would win. Um, let's see, I know, like I said, I know I'm forgetting gods. I just can't think right now. But I know, like, there's Saren, Sliske, Zeros, Zeros, however you want to say it. I might just look it up, because this is really bugging me now. Um, let me look up RuneScape God Emissaries, I guess. Because I honestly don't even <laughs> remember. It's kind of sad that I don't, but, um, let's just look this up. Because it's gonna be bothering me for the 
rest of the night if I don't look it up. So there's Armadale, Bando, Sarah, Saren, Sliske, Zamorak, Zeros, and the Godless. Never mind, I wasn't forgetting anybody. So, I wasn't really forgetting anyone. So, yeah. If I had to take a guess out of who is left, it would... I mean, the only people really who are left is Saren, Sliske, Zeros, and the Godless. And so, at least out of the emissary gods... I mean, technically, you could probably make a case that, like, some of the Egyptian pantheon, or not really Egyptian pantheon, but the desert pantheon, um, or whatever could make an appearance, but it's doubtful. I don't even know if they're doing a World Event 3, I'd assume they would be, but... So, unless they have repeat gods in it, um, it's either... It if I had to take a guess, it would probably be, like, something maybe, like, Sliske and Zeros, or... Maybe Zeros and Saren, or the Godless versus everybody else. I don't know. Um, you know, it. I mean, I'm kind of rambling on about this mostly because it's just something to talk about. Um, I mean, I don't really. I obviously don't really know. But if I had to take a, I had, I had to take a guess. It would be either the Godless versus everybody, or Sliske versus Zeros. If they um, stay attuned to emissary gods. And they don't do, um, like, a repeat if they don't put in another god. Because if they do, I could definitely imagine Zamorak and, uh, Zeros fighting it out. I could definitely picture that one. Because Zeros definitely has a reason to be a little angry with Zamorak. Definitely. But anyways. Um, I think that'll do it for me today. I kind of rambled on a lot about lore, and I kind of, I think... I think probably some of the points that I made in the video people will disagree with, and I'm fine with that. I mean, these are just, like, my opinions, obviously, and my ideas. I mean, some of them are total shots in the dark, too. Like, don't take me for serious either Some for some of the stuff that I've said. Because a lot of it probably was just, like, me rambling on and not really knowing what I'm talking about. But anyways... So yeah, I'm, I'm gonna quickly show you guys the Imkanado pickaxe like I said I would, and then I will go ahead and, um, stop recording. As soon as my computer stops lagging. Okay. It let my fraps does lag my computer a little bit and I have some things running in the background. Like I have Skype open right now. I have um Twitch open right now. Even though the Twitch video isn't playing. It still kind of lags a little bit. What else do I have open? I have some other tabs of other stuff open too right now, but I'm pretty sure it's probably Fraps, Twitch and Skype that's lagging me. This bad. Um, so, anyways, here's the Imkanado pickaxe. It's kind of cool looking. Um, that's this. So that is what it looks like when it um, has charges. It doesn't have the particle animations when it's not charged. Um, but I have about 40 charges on it right now. So that's what it looks like though when it's charged. It's kind of cool. Um, you know. I don't really know why I got it, I guess I just had the pieces and I wanted to do it. Psh, no real reason. So anyways, guys, um, I am going to get off now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye.